Okay, here we go. So, I'm Dr. Jeff Smith, and I'm going to explain a little bit about uh, the CTC, the Companion Therapy Compact. Um, this is to aid you in uh, using and installing your laser in your clinic. So, the first thing I want to talk about um, are all the components of what should have arrived. Um, one thing you're not going to see here is your mobile uh, medical cart, so you'll have to assemble that for the instructions. And I'm just going to show you all the other components uh, of the laser. So the first thing uh, that I want to talk about are the different components. You're going to have a soft package that arrives that looks like this. And uh, when you open it, um, you're probably going to have a pair of glasses in here. But what I do is I store the extra fiber and hand piece in here and an extra set of the foreheads. We'll describe those. And then in the top of this envelope, you'll find uh, one of the uh, books, the Laser Therapy and Companion Animal Practice. Sometimes people have a hard time finding this, but that's usually up in that top envelope. Once you uh, have these, these are basically backups, spares that you have, so put this in a safe place. Um, and you should not need to access, access that again unless you um, have a problem with your fiber um, handpiece or different heads. This is the carrying case that uh, the laser comes with, and it's a really robust, easy to get around uh, item. It's got wheels on it, an extendable hand, a couple of uh, locks on there. I typically do not lock my um, box, but if you want to, there's keys in the back uh, of the carrying case. In the back folder here, I always have my laser in use sign, uh, especially for mobile practices. That's a great place to keep it, and when you have the laser out, then you'll have the um, proper posting that you need. In here, you'll also find a uh, printed user's manual. Uh, most of this information is in the iPad and available in other places, but if you want to look at the user manual, you certainly can. There's also a fiber cleaning card, so if you happen to detach your fiber and you need to clean the head of it, you use this fiber cleaning card for that, and the instructions to do that are here. I've never had to do that on mine because I've had no reason to detach my fiber um, from the laser. So uh, in here the last thing that you'll find is an envelope that has uh, the uh, thumb drive with the software for the laser on it. If you need to do an update um, you can go to the Companion Corner website, download the update and then plug it into the back of the laser and uh, complete software updates that way. Okay, so I'm going to put this back and this is where I keep mine is in this place so I always know where it is. The rest of the case is empty at the moment and we've unloaded the ingredients from there. So you should have uh, four sets of doggles from the very largest to the smallest to protect your patient's eyes. Four sets of glasses. You're going to have two of the over the glasses uh, type. So if you have specs already like I do, this glass goes right over the top. And then um, there's two pairs of what I call the Bono style glasses that um, are for people that aren't already wearing specs. So, take those out, see much more stylish. Okay. Alright, and the other uh, components that you're going to find are the treatment heads. So again, you have two sets of four. I put one of the sets of four back in the uh, soft case. We have the um, large contact head, and then the other heads here are the small contact head the large non-contact head and the small non-contact head. And you'll hear this again, but just so you know, the small heads are for 5.9 watts or less and the large heads are for 6.0 watts or greater. Okay, now um, you're going to have a power cord, a transformer, and then uh, the laser. And the first thing I want to do is show you the back of the laser. A lot of times we don't really take the time to look back there. So on the back, we have a foot switch uh, option, which we're not going to use because we have a finger switch on the handpiece. We have a fan port. Um, we have this um, door uh, deactivator, which on the human side will uh, make the laser stop working if someone opens the door, so don't inadvertently pull this out or your laser will not work. There's an Ethernet port here that um, is not for uh, use um, by users. When we take it back to the shop, we might use that an on off switch and then again um, the power port that the um, 120 uh, volt uh, switch plugs into here uh, not the 120 the 12 volt because it's through a transformer plugs into here so this is that USB port we were talking about doing our updates through um, if you have to plug in your thumb drive there you're good to go 
and that's the whole back of the laser. On the bottom of the laser, um, you're going to see that we have uh, laser fiber attaches in here, and you always want to make sure that's finger tight. And then next to it, the thumb uh, or finger switch plugs in. And then these two doors are for the battery compartment, so should you need to replace the battery for some reason, you would undo these and you can take that battery out. A couple of foot pads on the bottom, and um, uh, your serial number is down here as well, so if you need your serial number for any reason, that's where that is. Um, one of the first things I like to tell people is that Whenever you use the laser, you want the cord completely unwound. You don't want to use it like this with a couple of loops uh, wrapped around the base. When we have this uh, in the clinic, we typically leave it uh, unwrapped all the way, and then we'll just put a couple of loops uh, back up over the top. The other thing I like to make sure people understand is that the handpiece only fits into the hand holder in one direction. That's pointing backwards. Um, this is not bi-directional. If you keep putting it in the wrong way, it will start to fatigue that holder. And it's a good safety idea because it ends up pointing the laser away from the user anyhow. Okay, so that is the basic uh, topology of the ingredients we have. We're going to take a pause here and then we're going to show you some of the buttonology next so you can understand how to activate the laser and use the interface. Okay, here we go. We're going to start with some buttonology. The first button that you want to know how to push is the on-off button at the back. You flick that on and your laser will start to come on. It takes about 30 seconds or so um, to fully activate and we'll watch the screen come on as it does that. So your laser should uh, basically follow this um, same amount of time and same amount of protocol going through the system initialization there, getting you some uh, beeping lines and then we'll come up with a start screen here shortly. So anytime you get onto this uh, laser you have to enter the code one, two, three, four, then press enter. Once you've done that you don't have to do that again until you turn the machine on and off. Um, so on the screen you're going to have three different choices of buttons to um, push. Protocols, operation, and setup. So I'll show you the setup button real quickly. Uh, under setup you have the aiming beam, the unit volume, and the finger switch, and then a choice of English or metric, so in most cases people choose English. Under the aiming beam, I like it on a steady light, so when the laser is either, either on or um, ready to be turned on by the finger switch, you'll see a red light emitting that's not a therapeutic beam, but um, I'm going to leave it in that position, the steady position. If you want it pulsed, you can switch to that. The unit volume. So we have it on medium and on beep. I usually like it either on medium or low so that we're alert. Whenever the unit is beeping, that means that it is actually emitting some laser light and you need to be wearing your glasses and showing proper um, caution. So we're going to leave that in the same place. And then the finger switch. So usually when your, your laser arrives, it'll be in the off position, but you want the finger switch in the on position. What that does is it allows you to touch the finger switch once, the laser emits until you touch it again, and then it stops. Otherwise, you're going to have to hold the finger switch down the entire time it's emitting. The only thing I'll tell you about touching the screen itself is that you want to touch it with the pad of your finger plus your fingernail. That seems to work the best. And give it a 1001, 1002. It'll usually blink when it senses your finger. Um, and I'll show you also, I do have the protective screen on the front of this, so when yours arrives, you can peel that off. You can leave it on for a period of time if you want as well, and that will um, protect the screen at least for a little while, sort of like your iPhone protector does as well. So I'm going to go back to the home screen here by pressing the home button. Let me explain a couple of the other buttons on here. So you can see the laser stop button, this is sort of an emergency stop button. Try not to use this if possible. The button that I like to use to stop the laser is uh, the finger switch button that's on the handpiece, and that's the one that I use 99% of the time. So um, again, this is available if for whatever reason you have a dog running around and you need to stop the laser suddenly, you can, um, but I typically don't do that. So let's talk about the uh, operation button. Most of the time when you begin using the laser, you're going to go through the protocol section. But in the operations section, you can change the variables however you'd like to do that. So um, in this case, I can choose the amount of power. I could choose 12 watts. I could choose 6 watts. 
You can also touch the power button here and then press plus or minus to get the number of watts to go up or down. And when I come out, then my screen will fill up. There I go. Um, and then I can also adjust the time by touching the time button and I can hit plus. So what, what you're going to notice is depending on the amount of time and the number of watts that you take, your number of joules will increase or decrease accordingly. Then as you are administering your dose of joules, it will bleed from this little box here to this little box over here. Okay? The other thing you can notice is there's a smart coat button here. And when you press that, you can pick the color of the coat and the color of the skin. So again, you can switch if you have your, say, golden retriever and you want to go to light skin color and light coat color, um, pick whichever is appropriate. That will change the blend of the two uh, wavelengths of light that we're using. So in the operations section, you have control over all of the variables of the particular treatment. You can go back to the home base. In the protocol section, the dose is um, determined for you, and then depending on how you change the watts uh, or the time, the dose will remain the same, but those two um, variables will change uh, inversely to one another. So as you increase time, you'll decrease. Um, uh, as you increase time, you'll decrease watts, or if you decrease uh, watch you will increase time. So let's just pick an example here. Let's pick a kitty. And let's say it's an average kitty with short coat and dark coat but light skin. And let's say we want to do arthritis of that cat's uh, hips. Maybe it's back too, so I can touch its hip. I touch its back. Go to the next button. So what it's telling me for this kitty is that I want to give 377 joules for the hip. If I forgot which treatment I'm on, I can hit the current treatment button and it will show me or remind me I'm on the hip of a cat of the description I just told you. I just touch outside the box and I'm back to where I need to go. Most often I will hit my max button and that just keeps the uh, treatment in continuous wave the entire time instead of letting it cycle through different um, treatments. And what you'll notice here is that the dose is telling me is 377 joules. So if I if I go from two and a half watts to five watts, my dose is the same, still 377 joules. But what's happened is my time has gone down by about half. So I've gone, let's go back to two and a half here. That's three. That's two and a half. I'm at 231. And if I go to five watts, I go down, oh, that's five and a half watts. I go down to 115, so just about half. So again, the dose is staying the same when you're in protocols, but the time and uh, the wattage change inversely to one another, unlike in the operation section where they are independent of each other. Okay, so that is the uh, basic buttonology. We're going to move on to part three here in a minute, but let's take a break. Okay, here we go. So um, I want to talk about a couple of things. One is the uh, operation of the laser on battery power. It will operate for about 40 minutes without being plugged in before you um, make the battery go out. If you have to plug it back in, it's ready to use right away um, on AC power. It will take an hour or so to um, recharge fully. So we keep ours um, plugged in most of the time during the course of the day and then um, if it becomes unplugged we can do several treatments in a row before we feel uh, compelled to plug it back in again. Um, I want to talk about the fiber as well. So uh, there is a maximum bending radius. You know this is a glass fiber in here so you don't want to bend it more basically than the curve uh, that is indicated by the wrapping uh, configuration there because you can break that. And this is uh, very durable, but again, dog biting it or chewing it is probably more than it can stand, so protect it from that. Don't leave it unattended with um, a dog in the room. Uh, let's see here. Let's talk um, a little bit about safety. So uh, that's probably one of the most important things. And um, there's two main requirements. One is that you have your danger laser and use sign posted and two is that you have the protective eyewear on uh, the people and the animals within a four to five foot radius uh, of the animal being treated and um, again if you're on reflective surfaces like a stainless steel table you want to cover that with a towel or a blanket so that that light's not bouncing back up at you. Remember that the uh, Two therapeutic wavelengths um, that can cause damage to your eye are invisible. That aiming beam is sort of to warn you um, 
where the light is going so that you'll um, be more cautious with that. Um, and I want to talk about uh, the contraindications. So again, these are sort of safety concerns. So the three strong contraindications are you don't want to go directly into the eye because the beam will focus through the lens on the back of the retina and cause a retinal burn. You um, don't want to do it over active hemorrhaging because you're causing some vasodilation and that could actually make the bleeding worse. And you don't want to do it over cancer because we don't want to stimulate cancer cells to be um, more active. Having said that, I have uh, treated animals with osteosarcoma and they do get some great relief and palliation from that treatment. So um, it is not that it will necessarily make the cancer worse, but we think that on a theoretical basis, uh, the idea of stimulating cancer cells is not a good idea, so avoid doing that. You'll also read that there's contraindications for doing it over testicles or ovaries or fetuses or pacemakers or cortisone injections. I think these are largely uh, jurisprudence uh, type of contraindications, meaning you don't want to do that um, and then have to prove a negative. In other words, if you did a testicle that you didn't, uh, were responsible for not causing a problem in that testicle, if a problem came up later, same in a fetus. So I don't think that there's a uh, specific um, uh, logic to uh, thinking that laser light will damage a testicle, but it's more based on the fact that uh, there's some uh, potential liability there that would be difficult uh, to explain. Okay, uh, the, uh, the other safety thing to mention is that um, we want to wear our goggles on our animals. And I just want to quickly show you how you do that. So uh, the goggles must be infrared rated goggles. The short strap goes under the chin. The back strap goes up behind the ears. The laser um, indication on the front of the lens is saying which wavelengths they protect against are on there. So you can't wear your Oakleys or your Ray-Bans, and you can't have an animal wear the regular goggles. They must be the infrared protective goggles. And still, you shouldn't be shining the light directly in the eye, even with these goggles. These are for reflected or incidental light that might happen to get into the eye. If you happen to be lasering around the mouth or the head, people ask about light getting into the eye, so you won't cause any damage to the eye if infrared light is coming in from an angle that doesn't um, go through the lens and focus that beam uh, on the back of the eye. If the animal uh, won't tolerate the goggles or it is too difficult uh, to laser around them, then uh, you need to cover the eyes with a darker cloth or washcloth, and I'm looking for one of my uh, lens cleaning cloths that are usually in with the glasses here. I have mine all taken out, so let me look back here. Yeah, here one is. So these um, sort of serve two purposes. One is that you can uh, clean your glasses with this, but this also works uh, very well over a cat's eyes. Say when you're doing stomatitis or gingivitis, you can cover the eyes with this. And then let me show you one other thing. Stand by for a second. I'll be right back. And that is... Um, these comfy cones. And the comfy cones are uh, an e-collar. This is the smallest size comfy cone. But they velcro together, go around the animal's head, and then protect the head uh, from the laser light, especially when you're doing the hips and arms and so forth. So I really like comfy cones and recommend them, um, again, for protect protection of the uh, animal's eyes when you're uh, lasering on the back half of the body. Alright, so I think that um, that is the main thing. I would say the last thing on safety is if you um, consider where you're doing the laser therapy. It's always better to do it in a quiet or separate area rather than in the middle of the treatment area like we are now. There's a lot of distractions, people coming and going. So we find that we have uh, better results and the animals are quieter and more sedate when they're in an exam room or a therapy room um, by themselves. So that should cover safety and we'll move on to the next section.